Hello again. V. Anton Sprawl here, talking about how you can learn to think like a programmer. As with other episodes, I'm going to discuss a problem that isn't in the book. In this episode, I want to talk about a problem that is similar to one I encountered a long time ago at a programming contest. Programming contests are great ways to push yourself as a problem solver. The kinds of programs you write in a contest are really all about the problem solving. Given the time constraints, no one is going to expect you to write a long program. The programs are short, but the problem solving may be very difficult. At the time that I encountered this problem, I was just a student and I didn't have any method to my problem solving. My natural problem solving abilities were pretty good, so usually I was able to work something out, but sometimes I ran into a problem that stopped me cold. So now I want to look at this problem again and talk about the different approaches one might take to a solution. I'll tell you up front that this problem requires nothing beyond the basics of programming. All you need are assignment statements, mathematical expressions, function calls, loops, that sort of thing. No arrays, classes, pointers, or anything more advanced. So here's the problem. We've got a robber who has just triggered the alarm inside a bank. His location is specified in coordinates. For the sake of discussion, we'll say that measurements are in feet. The robber is also given a speed in feet per second. The door of the bank is at a fixed location, which in our coordinate system is exactly 0, 0. The bank also has a guard. The guard also has a location and a speed. So when the alarm sounds, the robber runs towards the door while the guard runs towards the robber. So the robber is running towards a fixed point while the guard is running towards a moving target. The problem is to figure out where the guard and the robber will meet and if the guard catches up to the robber. If the robber reaches the door, then the robber has successfully escaped. I don't know how easy or difficult this problem sounds to you, but it seemed pretty hard to me when I encountered it at the programming contest. I'm pretty sure my team skipped it entirely. So you might want to stop playback here for a moment and think about this problem on your own. Okay, let's look at different ways we could try to solve this problem. The first thing I would say is that it's a complete mistake to try to tackle this thing head on. Really, for any non-trivial problem, it's a mistake to tackle it head on, but especially in a situation like this. If I don't build up this program bit by bit, not only will I have great difficulty in completing it, but more than that, I'll have no confidence in the program once it is complete. I can't think of any way to easily check my work by hand in this case. So unless the program crashes or produces an answer that just seems completely nuts, I'll have to assume it's the right answer even though I haven't tested it. If you watch previous videos or you've checked out my book, you'll know that the key technique for attacking difficult problems is simplification. We need to find a simpler problem, one simple enough that we can confidently get started on it, but that seems to lie along the path towards a solution. We do this by changing some of the specifications to make the problem easier. Here are the possibilities that occur to me. Number one, we could remove the idea of having the guard chasing the robber and instead have him head directly towards the door also. Number two, we could have the guard and the robber already in line with the door so that only one coordinate ever needs to change. Number three, we could ignore the guard for now and just figure out how long it takes the robber to get to the door. Or we could start even simpler than any of those ideas. Here's option four. Figure out where the robber will be exactly one second after the alarm sounds. Just that, leaving the guard out of the problem altogether. You see, what I'm most worried about in this problem is figuring out exactly how to correctly move one of our two actors along a particular diagonal. If these guys were running straight up and down, so to speak, 
or straight left and right, the, the math involved would be straightforward. But there's more to it when you have to translate straight line movement into changes in two dimensions. So either I want to take baby steps and figure out that part on its own, or I want to leave that element out of the problem for now and work on the overall structure of the problem separately. When you look at this problem, you may have a different idea about what is most difficult in it, and that will help determine your approach. There's no one right solution to a problem, and there's certainly not just one right approach to a particular solution. So I'm going to choose that last option. Where is that robber going to be one second after the alarm sound? To try to figure this out, I make some drawings. Here's the robber. Here's where he's headed. So this is the direction of travel. After one second, he's gone this far, which is specified by speed. So he's here, which means his X value has changed this much and his Y value has changed this much. When, when I do the drawing like this, I can see there's a right triangle implied by the movement. Oh dear, it looks like trigonometry is involved. I vaguely remember that functions like sine and cosine relate to the ratio of the longest side of the triangle to the other two sides, but I don't remember a lot beyond that. Of course, I want to look up these functions, dig out the old math text, and so on, but more than that, I want to design a test to give me confidence in my answer. So here's what I think. I'm going to position my robber here so that along the x-axis, he's almost in line with the door, but in terms of the y-axis, he's a long way away. Based on this initial position, if he's headed towards the door, each step should make a much larger change in his y-value than in his x-value. Also, I've set this up so that the x value should get a little larger, while the y value should get a little smaller. This is the other thing that I worry might trip me up. Signs, getting positive values where I should get negative or vice versa. I've got my test designed so that I've got an idea of what to expect, even if I don't know the precise answer. Okay. Here's the code that I came up with for this reduced problem. Let's take a look at it bit by bit. At the beginning, I've got variables for the X and Y position of the robber, along with the robber's speed. Next, I declare variables for what I'm calling the big triangle. That is, the right triangle designated by the robber's current position and the location of the door. At this point, I'm just manually assigning these values knowing what I've assigned for the robber's position. So I looked up some of the trigonometry I've forgotten, and I know I need to compute the ratio of these two sides. What I'm hoping to produce is the angle up at the top of this triangle. According to my trigonometry reading, I need to use the arctangent function which in the C++ math library is A-T-A-N, A-T-A-N. I go ahead and output the value of this angle. The function outputs in radians, but my brain doesn't work that way, so I convert to degrees. There's more to this program, but I want to point out that when I first wrote the program, this is where I stopped the first time and made sure the answer I was getting made sense. Based on the values I had chosen, I expected a small angle as the result, something less than 10 degrees. That is what this code produces, but it didn't when I first wrote it because I had divided the height by the width originally instead of the other way around. This is exactly why it's great to do things in small steps, testing along the way. 